Now this is his younger brother, Arthur, on the side. Arthur Judson. I'm sure there was a minister named Arthur Judson because they didn't name their sons except that way. And he became a, a dentist. Which one are we talking about? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. okay, that's fine. Okay, that's Uncle Art. And he made a lot of antique things. Uh, he made reproductions, miniature reproductions of, of uh, the f family furniture and things like that. But I think there's a you, Queen Anne chair, maybe Amy. Yes, was that. right. Okay, but there was there was a table with with three uh, levels, and and, they, and it was stuck around with little Wedgwood and uh, rabbits or something. Uh, but anyway, Uncle Arthur was an interesting man, and. I went to him as a dentist in his very old age before he became blind and as a matter of fact when I was pregnant with you, so that was in 1952 or three. Anyway, I went to him one day and I said he had to do a big thing on one of my teeth and he saw me clenching my fists and he said, Cynthia. He said, that isn't going to help you not feel the pain. I said, I'm afraid. He said, look at it this way. I'll put that drill inside your mouth, and you'll hear a lot of noise. If you clench up for the noise, that's going to make the pain worse. Why don't you just sit there and relax, listen to the noise, and when it gets so bad that you can't stand it. Scream or something and I'll stop at once. So I sat there and he drilled my tooth. I never screamed and you know, that was the <laughs> end of it. He had a lot of very simple things he said like this, but they always had a lot of sense to them. <laughs> and he lived next door to my to my grandfather. They they built their houses side by side in Wellesley Hills, Massachusetts. In the center is his sister Clara, and I never knew her. She she married Captain Navy Captain uh, Tim O'Leary, and they had a daughter Eleanor, who never married. And I used to see her sometimes. Well, we didn't. They didn't come to family parties and things, but at some point I had seen her. And there was another brother Frank, and we never talk about him. There was some way in which Frank was not. Well, this is Frank here. Uh, I know nothing about him, whether he had any children, anything. Nobody just spoke of him. But obviously he did something that wasn't considered good by the family. That's and you never met him? Never met him. <coughs> my grandfather never mentioned him. Jeez. But I found out about him through my mother. Amazing. Yeah. Did he live far away at that point? I know. have no idea where he lived. I mean, this was... I think characteristic in a, way, a lot of, a way of a lot of New England families. Certainly, in my father's family, there was a lot of of this kind of thing of just writing somebody off and not talking about him. You know. Mm -hmm. Now I can't tell who that is. That, Frank that's Frank. Also. That's Frank as a little boy. And those are the only two pictures I have of him, and I know absolutely nothing about him. How about that. Okay. So who's this? All right. This is John Oldham of Kingston. And he was the father of John Wesley Oldham, whom we've just been discussing. And he was a ship's carpenter. Everybody <coughs> going back from there was ship's carpenters. They built uh, ships. He lived on the Cape in Kingston, and he used to walk to wherever the shipyard was, but I don't know, it was Chelsea, I don't know where it was. It was in Massachusetts. It was certainly a 20 mile walk at least from where he lived. What, daily? Oh yes, every day he walked. 20 miles is a long... Oh, at least. I mean, it was, wherever the, the shipyard was, it was a long distance and he just walked as a matter of course every day. Hmm. There and back. He's got quite an expression. Yeah, and, and he was a very, very stern and also a very religious man. Now, this is his father. John Oldham. Again, I, this one may not even have had a middle name. This may have just been John Oldham of Pembroke, which is also near 
Plymouth. And he lived to be um, 90 years old. Mm -hmm. And he had two sons, and one was named, the first was John Oldham, and the second was Adoniram. Got this one here. But he was named after Minister Adoniram Judson Oldham. Okay, good. But I know nothing about Adoniram except that that was his brother. And this was this was the father of. And that's the father. That was John oh. Oldham of Pembroke, the father. Nice cherry sitting up. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And by the way, we have family chairs. It is assumed that the uh, chair that Amy has, the family chair, the Queen Anne's chair, was made by one or the other of these John Oldham. Oh, it was actually made in the family. Oh, yes. Yeah, because they were carpenters. Mm. And it was nothing to do it. It may have been a little after its time, but they often made things that were going out of fashion and doing but it. Mm -hmm. But this was it. And the little high chair that, that Maggie's been sitting in, that you sat in as a baby, uh, that little high chair belonged to John Oldham. No, I think it's probably John Oldham of Pembroke. Because yeah. it was used in around 1800. Yeah, so, so in the early early 1800s. So that would that would have been his probably his his son his son maybe. Yeah, so he made he made that chair. He made that, and uh, that stern fellow above him, on this page, sat in it. Is right. That it? That's exactly it. Right. And quite a few Peggy sat in it. I sat in it. You sat in it, Amy sat in it, and, now, and I think Marco Massimo and certainly now Maggie uh, all <laughs> sitting that? in this chair. That's yeah. some use from one chair. Yeah. Now, we have another thing. I think you have it. Do you have that slice, that black spade-like thing? That I you do. Have? I yeah. do, yeah. Well, that was a family piece. Uh, and who would have been six years old? And I guess it would have been... In what, in what time? What, what year? Oh, early 1800s. There had been an Indian raid, and I think it must have been John Oldham of Pembroke. No, yeah, probably his son, probably this John Oldham of Kingston. Of Kingston, I mean, yeah. Um, the family had to go away overnight, and there had been Indian raids. So this little boy of six years old, I think he probably had a younger sister or so at home, stood there by the door the entire night, with this heavy, this heavy iron slice that was used to... Call it a slice, it's like a little shovel. It's yeah, a, it's like a shovel, but it was uh, called a slice for some reason. Okay. And uh, he just stood there to protect... This was the, his weapon? Yeah, to protect the, the younger child or children from the Indians. Nothing ever happened, but mm -hmm. just the idea that somebody six years old would have this kind of fortitude and ability to just stand there and do that all night because hmm. his parents were on some mission they had to go and, and this story to has been remembered and passed down oh absolutely yes hmm. I always heard that I heard that as a small child I, I hmm. heard that often hmm. Mm -hmm. now we know not a great deal about Margaret Burse but Margaret Burse was John Wesley Oldham's wife uh, this is Margaret Burse, right. And after her, uh, Margaret Anna Oldham was named, and Margaret Fiorina de Costanzo was named. Um, she was 18 when she married John Wesley Oldham. And we don't know a great deal about her. We do have pictures of her at various ages. This is her aunt. Maria Holmes, Burse, Jerusha Doton. Uh, she's a Burse, too, but I, I'm trying to figure out who she married. Ichabod Burse, of course. And this is um, Sally Holmes Ryder Benson, and she was uh, Margaret Burse's mother's sister. And this is Sally Sturdivant, who married Ebenezer Holmes. And she was the grandmother of Margaret Burse. One of the ancestors, I think there were about six of John Oldham's ancestors that came over on the Mayflower. One of them was Miles Standish. Another one was John Alden. And another one was Priscilla Mullen. 
Now, all three of these figure in a very famous story, which children today may or may not know, but Miles Standish was a captain. He wanted to marry Priscilla Alden. He admired her from afar, but he didn't have the nerve to speak to her, so he spoke to his friend John Alden, and he said, uh, could you speak to Priscilla Mullen and see, you know, and so John Alden was a good friend, and he went to to uh, Priscilla, and he put in Miles Standish's request, and she looked at him and she said, speak for yourself, John. And she married him. John. She married John. John, <laughs> right. <laughs> so what and happened to Miles? People, well, most people think that's the end of it, but actually, when we get into the the, the genealogy, we'll find out that his grandson married John Alden's granddaughter or something like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that they finally did connect. <laughs> Just thought I'd tell you that. So even though I don't have the genealogy and can't go into the details about this at the present time, but it was a very important thing in this family that they came over on the Mayflower, that they struggled for their religion, and it mattered a lot to them. John Adams, who was the first, second president of the United States, was also there, and what's more, John Oldham was in his family, the Adams genealogy. So group. the Adams were on the Mayflower? They no. were from that group? No. no, they came a little afterwards. Mm -hmm. But there was some of some of John John uh, Oldham's uh, ancestors were Adamses, and they were not in a direct line from John Adams, but like a brother or sister or something. And they use all the same family names. You have Francis Adams, you know Charles Francis Adams, an important name in Boston, and Francis Adams is one of the ancestors. But when I find the genealogy, we'll have more on that. But that's why I feel a special connection to John Adams and the stories about him and so forth, because, because it really was family. And their attitudes towards life were really shaped by this so briefly, very were, deep Christian ethic they had. Did most of the family live in Cape Cod in those early days? Yeah, you know, Boston was something they didn't really approve of that much. Uh, that, they liked it better where they were. Working. Well, they were living there, but going into, I can't think of the name, it begins with a C, but I don't know, it's Chelsea, but it's some some city near Boston on the way in where the shipyards were. Yeah, yeah but is it Chelsea Shipyard? That's what I'm trying okay. to remember. I can't, I'm not certain of that, but that's where they, that's where they worked. They were all carpenters. <laughs> and John Wesley Oldham, became almost an engineer, but a self-taught one mm -hmm. who could build lighthouses and uh, bridges and things like that. Oh, he yeah. was much more, much more advanced, but a very pious man.